Okay, welcome back guys to another video from CXC Mat Tutor. So in this video, we'll be looking at the New York State um, Common Core Regions Geometry, um, January 2019 past paper. And um, we'll be looking at part one, all right, questions one to 12. That's questions one to 12 from the January 2019 New York State Common Core Geometry. Um, past paper. All right. So question number one, um, after dilation with center zero, zero, the image of DB is D prime B prime. If DB is equal to 4.5 and D prime B prime is equal to 18, the scale factor of this dilation is, okay. So remember the scale factor, one of the ways you can calculate the scale factor is taking a uh, length of the um, image and divided by the corresponding length of the um, pre-image, all right? So um, D prime B prime, that's 18, divided by um, DB, which is 4.5. Using the calculator, 18 divided by 4.5, it's gonna give you choice four. And the answer is four, so we use um, choice four there, all right? Okay. Uh, move on to number two. So in the diagram below, um, triangle ABC right, with sides of 13, 15, and 16 is mapped onto triangle DEF after a clockwise rotation of 90 degrees about point P. All right? And it said, if DE is equal to uh, 2x minus 1, all right, what is the value of x? All right, so if um, they, these are rotated here about the point P, all right, um, a clockwise rotation, all right, in that direction, so ABC is mapped onto DEF, um, all right? So therefore, this side here, this AB side here, line, uh, line segment, is gonna map onto DE after the rotation, all right? And so therefore, we can say that AB, the line segment AB is congruent to the line segment DE, all right? And therefore, um, 16 is equal to 2x minus one. So we can solve for x here, all right? So we can add one to both sides, so we have 16 plus one is equal to two X, all right? And then two X is now equal to 17. Divide both sides by two, this cancel this. So X is equal to 17 divided by two, right? Which is 8.5, so that's gonna be choice four, all right? Okay, so let's move on to question number three. Okay, on the set of axes below, um, triangle ABC has vertices A, negative two, zero, B, two, negative four, C, four, um, two, and triangle DEF has vertices D, four, zero, E, negative four, eight, and F, negative eight, negative four. All right. Okay. Which um, sequence of transformation will map triangle ABC onto triangle DEF, all right? So, looking at this here, all right, um, So we have A, B, C, and D, E, F, right? Um, so let's just see here. This is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is one, um, let's say, one, two, 
3, 4. Okay, so if this is 8 and this is 4, it means that we need a scale of one of these. All right? We need to uh, perform a dilation here. All right? So instead of axis A, B, C as this and D, E, F as that, uh, let me just read the question again. Uh, and it says, with sequence of transformation, we map triangle A, B, C onto D, E, F. So um, A, B, C is obviously the, um, the pre-image here and um, D, E, F is the image. All right, so we need to scale up A, B, C. All right, so since this is one, two, three, four, all right, one, two, three, four, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Obviously, this four year has to be multiplied by two. So the scale factor has to be two. All right. So if I take the, the coordinates of A, B, C, all right, so A is currently um, at x2, to negative 2, 0. So A prime after the scale factor of 2 will be, you multiply the 2 by this, so that so A prime here will be um, negative 4, 0. All right, so you have 2, 3, 4. So it's going to be here. That's going to be A prime. And B will is currently at um, 2 and negative 4. You multiply this, B prime is going to be 4 and negative 8. All right, so 4 and negative 8. B prime is going to be there. All right. And then C is at 4 and 2. And if you multiply this by the scale factor, C prime will be um, um, 8 and 4. All right, so it's going to be uh, 8 and 4. All right, so that's C prime. So what this is what this is triangle you have here after you scale it up by 2. Okay. So um, so after you perform the scale factor here. Uh, the, the, sorry, the dilation. Um, obviously, you have to do a rotation here to get it back. To get, so you want to get this side here, over here, for example. So that's, that's going to be 180 degrees rotation. All right, so it's a dilation followed by 180 degrees rotation, which is um, choice three. Okay. All right, let's move on. So number three is choice three. Okay. Um, the figure below shows a rhombus with non-congruent diagonals. All right, non-congruent diagonals. I said, um, which transformation would not carry this robust onto itself? All right. So is it going to be a reflection over the um, the short diagonal? No. All right. Is it going to be a reflection over the long diagonal? No. All right. Um, a clockwise rotation of ninety degrees about the intersection of the diagonals. Let's just see here. If you take this, I wrote. Rotate this. All right. So this will not, this will not um, um, take a, a clockwise rotation of nine degrees about the intersection of the diagonals will not take um, the rhombus onto itself. Okay. So that's just, um, obvious to try four. Uh, sorry. Ch Question four is choice three. The answer is choice three. Okay. Um, question five. Uh, in the diagram below, 
of um, circle O, all right, um, points K A T I E are on the circle, all right, and triangle K A E and triangle. Um, um, I, T, E are drawn. And the arc, K, E, this arc here, is congruent to this arc here, E, I. So automatically, this line segment, K, E, is going to equal to this line segment, um, E, I. Okay? I could say the chord. Okay? And this chord, K, E, is going to equal to the chord, um, E, I. All right? And... And therefore, this angle, if this side, these two sides are equal, then this angle is going to equal to that angle. All right? And um, we're also given that the angle EKA, EKA, this angle, is congruent to the angle EIT, this angle. So which statement about triangle K, KAE, and triangle ITE is always true. All right, so um, they are neither congruent nor similar. They are similar but not congruent. They're neither congruent nor similar. No, they are similar but not congruent. No, they are right triangles. No, all right, so it's going to be choice four. They are congruent. They are congruent by the, the the angle angle side because this angle is equal to this angle this angle is equal to this angle this side is equal to that side so it's a, the, the two triangles are congruent by the angle angle side possible all right okay let's move on to question number six so Sorry, oh, I got cough there. Okay. In right triangle ABC, shown below, point D is on AB, and point E um, and point E is on CE, such that uh, AC is parallel to DE, all right? And if AB is equal to 15, all right, so this distance here is equal to 15, and BC is equal to 12, all right, and EC is equal to seven, what is the length of DB, all right? It's length of DB. Okay. Um, so, if this is, um, all of this is 12 and this is 7 here, CE7, that means EB has to be um, 5 because 5 plus 7 gives us 12. But I state the 12 and I subtract the 7, that gives me 5 there. All right. Um, so, we're trying to find the length of DB, which is X. All right, so we can use the fact that um, these two triangles are actually similar here, ABC and DBE, all right? They're similar triangles, okay? Because this angle, these two, the angle here are actually a reflexive angle for the triangle DBE and ABC, and this angle and this angle are a congruent, and these angles are congruent here, all right? And we're told that, um, yeah, so, yeah, so it's, a, it's, 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 it's definitely a similar triangle. So we can say that um, 15, 15 over 12, we can use the ratio of the corresponding sides. So 15 over 12 
is equal to x. All right, equal to x over um, 15 over 12. Uh, let's just see here. So 15 over 12 is equal to x over 5. All right? So if we cross multiply here, we have 12x is equal to 15 times 5, that's 75. Divide both sides by 12. And x is now equal to 75 divided by 12, which is 6.25. All right? So the answer is choice 2. Okay. okay, let's move on. Um, in rhombus V E N U, all right, diagonals V N and E U intersect at S, mm -hmm. if VN is equal to 12 and EU is equal to 16, what is the parameter of the rhombus? So we have some rhombus here, all right? It's not, this is not, not joint to scale, obviously, all right? Okay. Um, so, and we are given that, so the, the, the rhombus is V, E, N, U, and the diagonal VN, all right, and EU, all right, intersect at X, S, sorry, all right, and VN is 12, and EU is 16. So if this is, if this is, um, if VN is 12, that means, Remember that um, the diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other, right? So, um, and they also bisect each other at 90 degrees too as well, all right? So this is a right angle here. All, all four of these angles are right angles. So this is going to be six here, this is six. This is, if this is um, 16, then this would be eight and this would be eight, all right? So we have a right angle triangle here. So we can use a Pythagoras theorem here, all right, or here, or here, or here, it doesn't matter, all right, to find the length of the hypotenuse here. So the length of the hypotenuse, x squared, is equal to six squared plus eight squared. x squared is equal to 36 plus six to four, because eight squared is six to four. x squared is equal to 100, take the square root of both sides, x is equal to 10. So if this is 10, remember a rhombus has all of its sides equal to each other. All of the sides are congruent. So if this is 10, 10 plus 10 is 20, 30, 40, and that's going to be um, choice two. Because remember the perimeter is a distance around the, um, the shape. All right? Okay. Um, question eight, given that um, given right triangle ABC, right, with right angle at C, right, this is right triangle ABC with right angle at C, and an ang the measure of angle B is 61 degrees. Given right triangle RST, RST, right, with right angle at T, the measure of angle R is 29 degrees. Uh, which proportion in relation to um, ABC and RST is not, is not correct? So let's just see here. Um, so AB, AB over RS is equal to RT over, supposed to be over BC, but they have AC here, so this is not correct. So choice one is the, um, the answer, the number eight, all right?
Okay. Press ten nine. It said a vendor is using an eight feet by eight feet tent for a craft fair. The legs of the tent are um, nine feet tall and the top forms a square pyramid with a height of three feet. So There's a square pyramid here with a height of three feet. Right? And it's the, the, um, the leg of the, um, the tent. All right? And the question is that what is the volume in cubic feet? Um, of the space that the tent um, occupies. All right, so basically, you have to, take, to find the volume of the um, the pyramid here plus the volume of this, um, you know, this this shape here at the bottom here. Okay. All right, so um, so remember the volume of our, our, our pyramid. All right is equal to one third the base area multiplied by the height. And plus you need to find the volume of this shape here, all right, which is like a rectangular prism, all right? All right, so, um, all right, this is a square here. So it's more like a square prism or something like that, square base, a square cross-section prism. All right, so um, plus, and plus, you need to plus the volume of this uh, prism here, right? which is the 8 times 8 times 9. And this would be one third of the, the area of the base. The area of the base is be 8 times 8, so the 8 square, right? uh, multiplied by the height, which is 3. Right? So this gives us 8 squared is 64 times 3. All right, if it's 192 divided by three, it's gonna give us 64. And this is gonna be us eight times eight is 64 times nine. It'll be 576. So the total volume is 576 plus 64. All right. Um, so that's going to be choice two, 640. All right. So the total volume is going to be 640. I might have said 64 before, but it's 640. 64 plus 576 gives you 640. So the answer is choice two, all right, 640. Cubic feet, of course. All right, uh, let's move on to number 10. So in the diagram below of right triangle KMI, altitude IG is drawn to hypotenuse KM. All right, so of course, whenever you see something like this, you have to remember the, um, the right angle proportions, all right? And so we have KG is nine, and IG is 12, that's the height, all right? And the length of IM, that's what we're trying to find, all right? So we can use um, the we can use the, the we can call this for example y all right because we need to find this if we can find this length here this is a right angle triangle here so this length plus this length and this length make up the right angle triangle and so we can use the hypotenuse sorry we can use the Pythagoras theorem to find x but we need to find y first and remember um, the, the proportions for right triangle, 
um, one of the proportional includes the, the height of the triangle. All right, so remember kg over the height is equal to the height over um, gm. All right, so this line segment here divided by the height is equal to the height divided by this line segment gm. All right, so kg is 9 over 12 is equal to the 12 over gm that we don't know. Let's call it y. So if we cross multiply here, we have 9y is equal to 12 times 12 is 144. So 144 divided by 9, that's going to give us 16. y equal to 16. So if this is 16 here, we can easily find x, im. That's what we're trying to find here because this is a right angle triangle here. So we can use a, um, the Pythagoras theorem here, all right? which says x squared is equal to 12 squared plus 16 squared. All right, so x squared is equal to 144, that's 12 squared plus 16 squared. Using my calculator here, it's gonna be 256. 256 plus 144, is going to give us 400. And if I take the square root of both sides, x is equal to 20. Okay, so that's equal to 20. All right. Um, and that's going to be a choice three for your answer. Okay. All right, let's move on to question number 11. It said, uh, let me just erase this. Okay, it said, which three-dimensional figure uh, will result when a rectangle um, six inches long and five inches wide is continuously rotated about the longer side? All right, so uh, we have a rectangle that is um, six inches long and five inches wide, right? Approximately. Right. It's always good to do a little quick sketch here. They have to be accurate. This is five and this is six, for example. And if you were to continuously rotate this um, about the longer side, Obviously, what you're going to get here is a cylinder. Okay, you're going to get a cylinder uh, with a radius of uh, five five inches and a height of um, six inches. All right, That's just by observation there. Right, so it's going to be choice three uh, for your answer: a cylinder with a radius of five inches and a height of six inches. All right. Okay, question number 12. Which statement about parallelogram is always um, true? The diagonals are congruent. No. Um, the diagonals bisect each other, yes. All right, so that's choice two. All right, so number 12 is choice two. And that's it for this video. All right, um, so I will, give, I will upload a next video for the other um, 12 or 13 questions, I believe. And um, that's going to be it for the, um, the New York State Common Core Geometry Regions, January 2019 past paper. All right? Okay, then, thanks again.